Hey guys, this is MadKids101, and today I'm going to be talking about the Dvorak keyboard layout. But before I get into what this is, I have to explain to you a little bit about what a keyboard layout is in general. So, in its simplest explanation, a keyboard layout is just where the keys are on your keyboard. So, right now you're probably using a keyboard, or you have a keyboard in front of you, and it'll probably look something like this. And this is the standard keyboard layout. Pretty much every computer you find will have this. A lot of smartphones will have this. And it's called the QWERTY keyboard layout because the top keys on the top row, the first couple keys, are Q-W-E-R-T-Y, and that spells out QWERTY. Um, so I'll just give you a little background on how we decided that the keys would be this way, and maybe you'll then understand why we shouldn't be using QWERTY at all. So. The QWERTY layout was made in the 1800s, back when they only had typewriters. That was pretty much the only thing you'd be typing on. And they decided that they needed to make a layout that would prevent the typewriter from jamming. And how did they do this? They just put the most, you know, commonly together keys far apart. So that way, on average, when you're typing, you're moving all around, so that way the typewriter doesn't jam up. Now, this is obviously not necessary now because pretty much no one I know uses a typewriter. We use technology where you can hit any sequence of keys and it won't matter because there's nothing to jam. So QWERTY was designed for a purpose that's no longer needed and you might be wondering well why are we still using QWERTY? And the answer is once you know a keyboard layout like QWERTY it's just like why do we still use English when it's obviously a terrible language or why does America not use the metric system? Once you already know something, you don't want to change no matter how bad the thing you know is because it's just going to be a pain to learn something new. And so that's really why we still use QWERTY even though it's outdated. And you know, QWERTY wasn't designed to make you type fast or to make typing easier or more ergonomic. And it wasn't designed to be good for hand alternation or for people with one hand or anything like that. It was literally just made for the typewriter's own protection basically and we don't even use typewriters, so I mean it's really a pointless thing to have around. And in fact, a guy named Dvorak noticed this, and in the early 1900s he actually designed his own keyboard layout. And this layout is now kind of a standard, but no one obviously uses it, but it's like the second most common, I don't even know if that's true, but it, it's all over the place, people talk about it, you know. Um, so his layout is called Dvorak, and it doesn't mean that the first keys on the top row are D-V-O-R-A-K, they're not. It's just named after him, so uh, a lot of people get that confused. But what the layout does is, it makes it so you have to move your hands around less, and so that when you, when you do type, you're sharing the work between hands more, and you're doing less work. So you might be saying, well, how is that possible, you know, what, well, what did he do? And a couple of the things you'll notice are, on the home row, the first keys are, on the left side, they're all the vowels. So, without moving your left hand at all, you can just type any vowel you want to. And on the right side of the home row are the most commonly used consonants. Now, this is obviously a great thing because when you're typing common words, you're just going to hit a key on the left side, hit a key on the right side, hit a key on the left side, hit a key on the right side, and you're going to have the word and it's going to be um, really easy to think ahead, and you're going to be alternating hands, so you'll be able to move one hand into the right place while you're hitting with the other hand. So that's hand alternation. It's one of the very important things. Another thing is, he put the most commonly used letters on the home row, then he put the second most commonly used letters on the top row, because it's easier to reach up than it is to reach down when you're typing. Don't ask me why it is, but I find this to be true, because, you know, I, for just like muscular reasons. So you're going to be using the bottom row very infrequently, maybe 10 or 20 percent of like the time you're going to be spending there. So it's not a very important row. And that just makes it a lot less painful to type because you don't have to keep on constantly going down for keys. And even on QWERTY, you know, there are no vowels on the bottom row, which is a good thing, but there are letters like M and N that you're going to use very frequently that you just, they're a pain to get at. Um, so that, among other things, is why Dvorak is better. So now let me show you guys how to switch your computer over to Dvorak if you want to try it out, and I'll give you some tips on how to learn it. Alright, so the first step to setting up Dvorak on your Mac is to obviously open up System Preferences. So let's go right ahead down to System Preferences, 
And now let's go on over to the keyboard and let's hit input sources. So this is where you can select keyboard layouts that you want to use, and in this case we're going to be enabling Dvorak. So for things first, let's check off keyboard and character view. That'll be helpful in a second, I'll show you why. Now let's go into the search box and let's type Dvorak. We can just type like DVO or something. And you'll see a couple different options. We're going to be using Dvorak QWERTY on the command sign. So what this will basically do is you'll be using the Dvorak layout, but when you hold the command key to do a keystroke like command S or command C or command X or any, anything like that, command P, you know, any of the common keyboard shortcuts, it's going to be in QWERTY so that way the keyboard shortcuts are the same. And I know this is helpful for me because I just know some of the keyboard shortcuts, like my hands know how to do them and I don't want to have to relearn how to do those, so I'm going to be using this. So now you'll see, if you just check this box off, you'll see right up here, it'll say US or maybe it'll just be a little American flag. And you can just tap on that and hit Dvorak. And now your keyboard is in Dvorak mode. Now, you'll probably notice that you can't type anything. Now, I can because I know Dvorak pretty, pretty well. Um, anyway, so you'll have you'll have very much trouble typing in this and what's really helpful is the keyboard viewer so you go down here and you hit show keyboard viewer and up will come this little on-screen keyboard now this will show you basically if you put your hands on the right place on the keyboard it'll show you where the keys are on the Dvorak layout and you're gonna have to you know do some experimenting and you know types a lot of stuff before you know where these keys are on your own so I suggest either typing out song lyrics in a text editor or just, you know, talk to people on AIM or message, you know, write emails in Dvorak. Um, but during this beginning when you're just learning where the keys are and you, you don't know where they are and you have to use the character viewer, I suggest not only using Dvorak. You know, if you have a job and you have to type for your job, I really highly suggest you use QWERTY. Or, you know, you can just go down here and select US and it'll be back to the QWERTY layout. So, the, the thing is, you're going to want to, when you're learning Dvorak, you're going to want to use the right fingers for pretty much everything. Because if you touch type incorrectly to begin with, then there's no point in really learning it because you're not going to be able to reach your full potential anyway. So you definitely want to learn which fingers go to which keys and all of that stuff. So you'll basically have this key character viewer up here, and if you, to start out, you'll probably open up text edit and you know I don't know you'll open up text edit and you'll just start typing song lyrics and you'll probably have to look at the thing and spend a good five seconds for each key to figure out where the key is and after doing that a lot you'll start to get an image in your mind of where the keys are and you'll be able to do that on your own but it might take you know four or five hours of practice before you can do that it took me about three I'd say before I actually knew the keyboard layout pretty pretty well. And once you do that, you probably won't need this character viewer at all anymore. But that's basically how to get started learning Dvorak. After you know the keyboard layout and you might have to still think about a key for one or two seconds before you can type it, it's best to probably use Dvorak for pretty much everything if you can. So maybe wait for a holiday or something where you'll have a lot of free time and you don't really have to be typing fast so you can learn Dvorak better. Um, because really, you just have to practice a lot, and a lot, and a lot, and a lot, and then you'll be good at Dvorak, and you'll get faster and whatever. I've been on a two-week vacation, pretty much, starting like two weeks ago, um, and I've just been using Dvorak the whole time. And I'm, I'm not that fast at typing, but I can certainly do stuff. And, you know, maybe I'm 40 words per minute on a pretty good day, and 50 on a really good day. So, like, I can type, this is a test pretty fast, and that's all in the home row, so it's obviously not really fair, because that's an easy sentence to type. Um, but yeah, so this is how to switch your computer over to Dvorak, and just my little spiel on how to start learning it. So yeah, my biggest tip is, it's going to be really frustrating at the beginning when you're typing at 7-8 words per minute, it's going to be very slow, you're not going to be able to do anything, and you just have to bear with it until you're up to 30 or 40 words per minute. 
And for me, I was like, I'm 100 words per minute in QWERTY. So it's sometimes it's very frustrating when I just can't express myself in Dvorak the same way I would in QWERTY, whether it's in a chat room or, you know, I'm writing code or any of a number of things, you know. So it can get frustrating, but you really just have to stick it out and type, just, just type slowly, be steady with it, and try to make as few mistakes as possible in the beginning at least, so that way you get a feel for, you know, the right keys and where they actually are. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching MacKids101. Subscribe, uh, comment on this video, you know, maybe share your experiences with learning Dvorak or any other keyboard layout. Uh, so thanks for watching and goodbye.